Back on TC Live, have you checked out Tennis.com today? If you have, you've seen the story on Tennis Sandgren's adventures in cycling. You've seen the story on Anastasia Sevastova's adventures in rollerblading. It's a heavy wheel sport edition of Tennis.com. Also, the TC podcast with Hall of Famer Steve Flink on his new Pete Sampras book, all that and more at Tennis.com. So it's it's a uh, rotic time, Jim. You you knew that Andy would be good at this TV thing if you ever decided to of course. give it a go, right? I mean, if you ever watched a press conference from Andy, you know he's full of it, and it's going to be good. <laughs> You're going to like what he's full of. Look at all the laughs and smiles he provided us during those ten weeks over the summer. He made us admire the bar and his home. I he was made us say, lots smart. of background pictures, right? Huh? Well, there was a, he was either showing his bar, which he was very proud of that he constructed <laughs> in his house, or the Sweetens Cove hat on his head. What what are we advertising on the hat today? Anything in particular, Andy? A little in-town golf club coming your way in Atlanta in February <laughs> of, uh, of next year, <laughs> pandemic willing. Thank you for asking. Uh, that's we're here as a promotional vehicle for uh, for you. Um, oh. We want to get into a couple topics as uh, tennis has now returned in full as of today. Uh, as you know, uh, the U.S. Open is going to be missing six of the top ten women, three of the top ten men at least. And so there's been some question about whether or not it will be devalued, historically speaking. Before we pose that question to you, Andy, take a listen to what Novak Djokovic had to say on the topic. With Feder and Nadal and Vavrinka not coming to... Um to the tournament, every other top player is here. So I, I don't make a significant difference in terms of whether this Grand Slam should be considered as a Grand Slam in terms of title or, or something like that, because I see there's a conversation about that and that people think that it's, it should not be valued in the same way. I disagree with that. I think uh, you know, that most of the top players are here. Right. So that's uh, Novak's position on it. What, what do you say, Andy? Sh should this U.S. Open, for whoever wins it, men and women, have a, a, a so-called asterisk next to it historically? Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is it doesn't really matter if a person doesn't think it's valued the same because historically it will be valued as a Grand Slam win. And uh, as I'm kind of hearing people talk about it, you know, Rogers missed plenty of tennis. So he missed the entire second half of 2016, uh, pulled up a couple things about Rafa. In the 15 hardcore events that he entered from 2017 to October through Miami 2019, he actually only completed three of those, whether you either withdraw or retired from it. And no one's talking about it. people play sometimes, they miss some time. It counts. You, 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 your job is to be the best player at that tournament uh, uh, at a given time frame. And, you know, whoever comes out of the U.S. Open sh is going to be a U.S. Open champion forever. Yeah, I think your, your point in the beginning where historically it doesn't matter. And we look back at our Grand Slam champions and, and people talk about, oh, well, some players didn't go that year in the 70s. They were boycotting this or that. It doesn't matter. That player, whoever won that tournament, is that Grand Slam champion. And a lot of ramifications in this era, especially for a player like Serena, who's trying to get to that magic number. Also, Novak trying to catch up to Roger and Rafa. But ultimately, like you said, Andy, it's not going to matter whoever wins. No, and when it's all said and done and, and they're the writing obituaries, it's going to be on whoever wins. It's going to count. So that's the fact of the matter. doesn't matter. I mean, yes, we don't have Roger and Rafa. It's been a long time since we haven't had them. Yes, a lot of the top women are not coming as well. Someone's going to go and win seven matches. Someone's going to lift the trophy, and someone's going to walk away as a champion. If it's their first one, they're forever going to be a Grand Slam champion no matter what. doesn't matter what people think or say. Those are the facts. I thought it was interesting that Marianne Bartoli tweeted this week that she thought that this would not be a quote-unquote real Grand Slam, and someone pointed out, when she won her 2013 Wimbledon title, she didn't face anybody ranked higher than 17 in the world en route to the title. Lindsay, should her Wimbledon title be discounted because of that? Of course not. I mean, you, you play who you play, and everybody's playing to win that trophy when all is said and done. It Honestly, it doesn't matter who you be. You've just got to get that win seven times over the course of two weeks, and you're a Grand Slam champion. All right, uh, other topic, Andy, we've been getting used to the idea of tennis without fans. This was the first time we saw it at the uh, Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. You obviously had a very special relationship with the fans in New York. Would it be weird for you, hard it, for it, you to play without them? Yeah, it's, it, but I, I think the last question where we're talking about if a Grand Slam champion counts or is it weird playing without fans, I think judging anything right now in any part of the world against perfect is a bit of a fool's errand, right? I was actually talking about it earlier, and I said, oh, the New York, it'd be so bad. I'm going, 
hey, listen, six months on the couch, I'd be pumped to get out there and playing. And you wouldn't, <laughs> you, you wouldn't really need much motivation. I mean, you're, you're not locked in a, you know, you, you get to actually work and you get to participate and you get to do what you love. So yes, yeah, judged against perfect. It sucks. But given the opportunity to, to play a, a Cincinnati event in New York and, and get ready for a USO, but you kind of feel alive again. I, I, I'd be pumped to do it, even, even if it was imperfect. Yeah, and, and one other thing to be mindful of if you are a player is you are playing for lots of fans watching online, watching on Tennis Channel, watching around the world. So th though you may not feel the energy in the building, you're creating energy around the world by doing what you're great at. So it's a great opportunity for the players. Again, I mean, I, again, the choice is pretty stark. Sit on your couch for a play. I think it's a pretty easy yes if it were me making the choice lens. As, as Andy said, it's, it's not perfect, but, but someone once said perfect is the enemy of good. And uh, this is certainly good to have tennis back. Quick break. When we come back, we're going to tap into Andy's detective skills in a Gems Life themed real or not real. Stay with us, TC Live. Back in a moment.